All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is um, Ratna Nuti. I am a sports medicine, uh, family medicine, sports medicine physician um, out here in the DFW Metroplex. And we are going to go over level of evidence with sort and what that means and how it, what it entails. So, okay. So biggest question is what is sort? Well, sort stands for strength of recommendation taxonomy. So um, basically it looks at how the articles are either given us recommendation strength. So if there is a study that was published, is it a um, recommendation where you have um, an A, B, or C level type of recommendation um, on it? And what level of studies are and the quality of the study that's involved in making this decision? So just to kind of briefly go over it, um, mainly, obviously, A is good, C is not so great, um, B is in between, um, just to kind of give a generalized overview. The quality of the study, we're looking at level one evidence of study, level two, and level three. So, and you basically take a quality of study and look at what makes it a level one, what makes it a um, level one enough that you would make it a strength of recommendation that this would be an A um, rather than anything else. So if you have like a paper where you're looking at the clinical decisions and you're seeing that it's um, all meta-analysis, randomized controlled trials, that's a great high quality study. Um, and any recommendation that you typically make from it or a recommendation that comes from it is backed by high level quality of evidence. So hence you can confidently say this is a great um, uh, paper to reference and the recommendation that comes from it is um, level A on that. Now, the other things you wanna look at when you're looking at studies is across the studies is the consistency. Is it consistent? Is the conclusions that one paper draws from the other paper pretty consistent across the board on a topic? Or is there inconsistencies? And why is it? Is it because it's not a high quality level of study or is it basically um, high quality levels, but they're finding different outcomes? So these are things you wanna keep in mind when you're making these decisions. Now, how do you assign it? Um, it's a pretty um, complicated, um, diagram here, but um, just to break it down to make it very easy um, as best as we can is that you look at what key recommendations are, um, the paper is trying to make or what a clinician is trying to say, and you look at an algorithm here, and basically it's either if it doesn't have key recommendations, then maybe we don't need to even bother with giving it a recommendation level. But if it does, then the next step is to know, is the recommendation based on patient-oriented evidence, such as improvements in morbidity, mortality, quality of life, cost? Those are some, some of the things to consider. If not, then you can automatically say, you know what, this is not as strong of a recommendation and assign a level C. If you say, no way, it does, then you can go to the next step and say, is it based on opinion? Is there benchmark research? Is there consensus guidelines? If there is, then again, you go back to the strength of recommendation being a C, but if not, then you look at what levels um, the quality of the study, such as, is it a Cochrane review? Is it um, with a clear recommendation? Does it, is it based on the USPSTF um, grading recommendation? Is there consistent findings? Um, is there validated clinical decision rules? If so, then you can basically probably say it's gonna fall anywhere between an A and a B. And then based on that, you can um, grade that study. Now, how do you assign a level of evidence of an individual study? Say you got a paper and now you have to say, okay, what level of evidence is this? Is this a level one, two, three? Like, how do I even determine that? Um, again, there's a nice little algorithm um, set out. And um, this is from where you can take a study, you can look at the key citations, the point of evidence under discussion. And if there's not a key um, study or um, citations, then you can say, yeah, level of evidence is not needed. But if there is, then you can say, all right, maybe the outcome of the study is based on patient-oriented evidence. Um, and if not, then you pretty know this is not a, probably a high-quality level of evidence 
But if there is, then you pretty much go through and you can kind of see the um, uh, questions kind of repeat are kind of repetitive for a good reason, because then you go to the study base that's based on the um, opinion and you can say, is it a case series? Is it practical? Um, what are you seeing? If it's yes, then all right, maybe it's not as high quality. If it's a no, then you look at what kind of high quality is it? Is it a, again, systematic review, meta-analysis, randomized controlled trials? Then probably most likely these, this is gonna fall anywhere between a one and a two um, on this. So a lot of this information is overwhelming, but it's very simplified. If you just follow the algorithm, if you look at what the paper is saying, what is the point of the paper and how are they getting that point across? That is the most important thing to look at. And a lot of the questions that you're asking yourself to assign these um, letters or numbers, you're looking at pretty much consistency across the uh, value of the studies. And so a lot of this information was taken from AFP um, with regards to the information that was just being told to you. So hopefully you find um, this to be a simplified um, version um, of how a complicated process can be, but hopefully it makes um, it easy for you. Thank you.